Hello, and welcome to another episode of the How To Carnivore podcast. We're back with Anthony Chafee, the plant-free MD. Anthony, welcome. Hey, thanks, man. How are you? Very good, thank you. Mate, you're all kitted up, ready to go. Yeah, well, it just, just went. I just, just finished up surgery, so yeah, have a bit of a break. Very good. Um, so the topic for de- today is all about hormones, uh, and we're going to talk about a world that I know very little about, um, and that's female hormones and estrogen. So maybe we can start off by explaining exactly what estrogen is and how it's created. Yeah, well, you know, estrogen is one of the the main sex hormones um, in in people. Both men and women produce it and use it, and you you men need a little bit of it. Oh, so need- men have estrogen too. Yeah, and you and you actually need some of it. You know, so um, you you don't. You know, people will think about like you know, bodybuilders, um, and, uh, and other people, well, obviously you can, you can take exogenous, uh, estrogen and try to you know, change your body features. Or, you know, if someone is, um, you know, taking, uh, other hormones that can, that can mess with your testosterone, your estrogen. And so you have to take different, different drugs to modulate these, but you actually do need some estrogen. Estrogen is actually very important. Uh, right, so for, are you, are for you men as well. that like a, a bodybuilder who's taking exogenous testosterone might also need estrogen to sort of no 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 the opposite so yeah. some of that that testosterone can get converted into estrogen so they have to take estrogen blockers so so like things that will block the conversion of testosterone into estrogen because we all start out with with testosterone and then it gets converted into estrogen so even women don't just make estrogen they make testosterone which is then converted into estrogen Oh, okay. And so, yeah. And so if you're taking, you know, just, you know, just butt loads of, of, uh, testosterone, you know, a portion of that can be uh, converted into estrogen and then you get those, uh, you know, sort of, the, you know, uh, different sorts of, um, uh, issues re- related to high uh, estrogen in men. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's, um, you know, so that's one of the, one of the sex hormones, obviously there's testosterone and then there's progesterone progesterone for women. Um, and these all have to be in a very, very specific and ordered balance or else you, you, you know, aren't going to be in, in perfect health. I don't know, there's tons of other hormones as well, but just specifically for reproductive health, these are, these are very, very important. Um, for women, obviously estrogen and progesterone are, are your main ones, but you mm. actually do still need a bit of testosterone. Uh, the problem comes when that goes out of balance because, uh, as we mentioned in the, you know, the female, uh, you know, fertility episode, um, and I'm you know, talking about PCOS, the conversion of testosterone to estrogen happens in the ovaries, but when you have high insulin levels, you'll actually block that conversion. So insulin will block that conversion from testosterone into estrogen. And so not good. Yeah, no, not good. So women will have much higher levels of testosterone than they actually want. And then they'll have much lower levels of estrogen than they actually want. And you can, and this can have quite a lot of problems and and people can develop PCOS and which is one of the leading causes of infertility in women, uh, but it also mm-hmm. causes a lot of other problems. So you can you can gain weight. You can uh, you know have what's called hirsutism, which is they they inappropriately uh, grow hair on their face and their back, uh, or you know other places as well that that you would typically see in men and not women. So uh, that's obviously not not uh, desirable uh, in in many cases. In most cases. Uh, just from an appearance point of view, but you also feel like crap. Yeah. And when you're not getting your period and you're not able to conceive, that's a, that's a very baseline level of, of health. That's sort of a, you know, canary in the coal mine that, you know, things, things are wrong, you know, and your body's just basically saying, nope, you know, we're not, we're not going to subject ourselves to creating another life because there's something, it's too, things are too far out of whack. It's not going to work. So it, things just sort of shut off. And, um, and so that, that's what you see. And so you, you see in, in uh, uh, there's Dr. Um, you know, Kiltz, who's been a, a um, reproductive endocrine, been in reproductive endocrinology for, you know, decades. And he's been a carnivore for over a decade. And he actually incorporates this into his practice, getting women healthy and able to uh, conceive um, How then as well. You know, um, Dr. Ken Berry actually in one of his videos talks about how when he would get women just on a ketogenic diet, they would have 
you know, much better health in general, but also reproductive health. And he actually would have a few women actually came in who they were, they were in menopause mm. and all of a sudden they come back and they're pregnant and oh, they're pissed. Man. They're like, what did you do to me? You know, <laughs> so healthy that they came out of menopause and, and, and had a kid. And so you know, it's very <laughs> so surprising pregnant. when you're 50 and you've been in menopause for yeah, five years and all of a sudden you, you're pregnant. But, you know, it's also, you know, a, a I mean, great the, the definition of a blessing when you, when you have a child, when you, when you didn't even realize that you were capable of that anymore. Uh, but that's how powerful this is. That's how powerful diet is. You know, someone's in menopause in full-blown menopause has not had their uh, cycle in years. And all of a sudden they're, they're reproductively healthy again. And that's just, that's just, you know, just the tip of the iceberg, because that, that denotes that the rest of their body is so much more healthy and that they would be able that their, their body, their biology thinks that they would be healthy enough to sustain a pregnancy. Yeah. Incredible. Definitely yeah. the definition of health. I mean, 50, mm. five years of menopause into, into having a baby. How good's that? Yeah. 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 So yeah, no, it's, it's uh yeah, it's very good. So, you know, yeah, diet, diet makes a huge difference and that's just keto. You know, that's mm. just keto cutting out carbohydrates and reducing your insulin. So you're not converting testosterone and estrogen. That's just, just one process, but it's a major one. Um, well, what about the rest of these things? Well, we know from, you know, plants are going to kill you episode, you know, there, there are one of the ways that plants, uh, try to kill you or try to not have you kill them is by, uh, modulating your hormones. So having hormone modulators that screw with your hormones, send them out of whack, make you feel wretched. So then you don't want to eat that plant anymore. Mm. And, you know, we know about phytoestrogens and like in soy, there's, there's, you know, 20 times the amount of phytoestrogens in soy than, uh, than, you know, like the birth control pill. Now mm -hmm. that's not, that's not a one-to-one -one comparison because it's not, it's, you know, it's not exactly, um, as powerful as estrogen in your body, but it absolutely yeah. works as estrogen in your body. Mm -hmm. And when you have, you know, 2 million nanograms of, of phytoestrogen and, 35,000 nanograms of normal estrogen in a birth control pill, you know, even if it's just a 10% conversion rate, like you're screwed, a lot, you know? yeah. like it's going to mess you up. Yeah. And, you know, and that's just in, you know, in a few ounces of soy, you're, you're over a million nanograms of these phytoestrogens. And so some, some people eat a lot of soy, you know, mm. and, and uh, soybean oil is in everything. Like basically mm. every mayonnaise is going to be soybean oil. We use so much soybean oil. I think I, I saw a statistic the other day that basically we, we're, we're consuming an equivocal amount of, of animal fat to soybean oil, you know? So there's a lot Horrendous. of soybean oil yeah, in, yeah. Our, in our diet as, as you know, on, on average. If, if, if soy has a lot of estrogen, um, how is that going to, for females when they eat it, how is that going to affect their sort of natural estrogen production yeah well it's going to screw it up you know right, so okay. you're gonna, yeah you're gonna have yeah well you're gonna have have more of an estrogenic effect uh than your body necessarily wants you know well maybe you're you're offsetting something maybe you're you're eating so many carbohydrates that you're screwing your uh, uh estrogen production and so maybe this <laughs> offsets it a bit but who knows you know it's it's, yeah. it's very hard to tell you know your body knows how to regulate its hormones if you let it you don't you know, mm -hmm. I mean, you can look at, you know, I mean, certainly don't like on a day-to-day -day basis anyway, you know, you can do lab tests and check you and, you know, try to, try to modulate your, your hormones that way. And you can, you can do that with some success, but it's not going to be part of the whole big picture. And also <laughs> you're not, you you're not just point on a daily basis, like we're just eating all, well, this is how much soy I need. Like, you're never going to know that, you no, know, man. unless you're, unless you're doing like daily blood oh. tests and you're, and you're tech checking and testing and, you know, so you are just never going to know, uh, but it's going to throw it out. It's going to throw it out of balance and it's, it's not going to be helpful. And obviously there are other things in there as well, which screw with your health, which you're, you're not going to want, but um, yeah, so that, that, that's a major thing is, you know, just doing keto are taking people out of menopause. Well, you go next step and now you're taking out all of the, the plant toxins and uh, uh, hormone modulators that exist in plants. And this is, this is going to further improve your health. Yeah. I, th I think you make a good point about like people's estrogen productions getting stuffed around by too much carbohydrate consumption. And then they're like, okay, that's cool. I'll just eat these sort of exogenous 
yeah. uh, you know, estrogen yeah. from eating things like bulk yeah. soy. Well, well, it could be, you know, that, that women like, you know, some women would like tofu. Maybe that makes them feel better if they're in that position. Could be it's even if, even if you got it right though, you're still making, you're, you're still not converting your testosterone into estrogen. And so now you have too much testosterone, no matter what you're doing, even if you're, even if you're sort of offsetting your, uh, your, your estrogen detriment by mm. eating soy or whatever, you're still going to have too much testosterone and that's, yeah. and that's going to screw you up as well. Yeah, exactly. And another thing that we've spoken about before, I think it was in the, the PCOS episode was we were saying that, um, like sort of uh, a lot of carbohydrate consumption or like, you know, eating lollies and sweets and things like that. I think they're often portrayed as being quite feminine, um, mm. but being addicted to sugar and having your blood sugar spike all the time throughout the day is making you way less feminine because it's mm. stopping you from converting that testosterone into estrogen, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, well, it, it's certainly screwing with your, your female hormones anyway, mm. you know? And, mm. um, and so you feminine know, appearance, can, maybe what I'm saying is like, you know, Oh, it could be, you know, it, it could be. And I mean, uh, you know, people that suffer from PCOS, uh, you know, do have different sort of characteristics like her uh, which are unappealing to, to many women. Um, you know, everyone's different. Maybe some people don't mind that or, or, or prefer it. I don't know, but you know, um, uh, there are quite a lot that, that, uh, don't and, and wouldn't, wouldn't want that. So it's, um, you know, and then, you know, putting on weight and not being able to control your weight and, mm. and uh, other aspects of your health it can be just very, very difficult, um, physically and, and mentally, certainly. Mm. Yeah. So perhaps the best thing you can do is go and eat a steak and yeah, bacon absolutely. and yeah, eggs yeah. And all that sort of stuff that, you know, our blokes on the barbecue, you know, women need steak and meat and proper nutrition as much as men do. Well, yeah, well, exactly right. And obviously because this, we are one species and, you know, I, I mean, what, what, what uh, example can you find where the females and males of the same species have different diets, Yeah, you know, yeah. because people ask me, you know, well, is this diet good for women too? I don't want to get all big and bulky like a man. It's like, this isn't man juice. No, you know, absolutely this, not. This is just turn you into a dude. This is, this is just food for humans. And so, you know, female lions eat the same things, male lions. You know, female badgers eat the same thing as male badgers and so on. You know, it's just like, it's a species thing. It's not a male female thing. And so they absolutely need exactly the same food that we do. Maybe uh, not as much if they're smaller, but uh, and not, not being as physically active, but you know, they still need, it's the same food, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also, you know, just, just very importantly for hormonal health is cholesterol, you know, cholesterol mm. is so vilified, but it is absolutely vital, you know, to the point that we make cholesterol ourselves, but we only make 70% of the cholesterol we need, right? Okay. right? And that's 70% of the cholesterol we need. And that's sort of as, you know, as figured out when, or as decided by people who thought that cholesterol was bad for you. So maybe we actually need a lot, <laughs> so more. A lot more. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. So it could be actually that we would, would benefit from, from more than that, but mm. either way it is indisputable. It's just, it's just a hard fact that cholesterol is a precursor for testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, progestogens, uh, mineral corticoids, steroids, and uh, glucocorticoid steroids. These are the, the steroid hormones that are made in your adrenal glands, like cortisol. Uh, very important. You die without these things and you're miserable before you die. Um, they, they all come from cholesterol. And so mm -hmm. you have to have cholesterol. You have to have enough cholesterol to make uh, the, the, the hormones that you need, and then you need other things being in balance so that you're able to utilize and convert and, uh, um, uh, you, yeah, use those, those hormones, uh, to the best that, you, that your body can in, in the way that your body wants to. Um, but yeah, but cholesterol is, is, is in everything else. I mean, it's what's bile is, is a component of, uh, uh, cholesterol has a component in bile. Um, every single cell in your body, the membrane is cholesterol it's somewhere between 20 or sorry 40 and 60 percent of the surface of your membrane it's just cholesterol that's like the that's like the the skin around the cell if you will and mm -hmm. then everything else so you have proteins and everything stuck into that uh cholesterol is vital you absolutely need cholesterol and for your brain as well so uh mm -hmm. yeah so that that's very very important and you know 
we've been told that, you know, fat's bad, fat's bad, fat makes you fat. And, and, uh, you know, particularly, um, you know, young girls or women will, you know, not want to be fat and, you know, and so they'll avoid that and they're going to screw their hormonal health and they're going to screw their hormonal health going through puberty, which is not the time you want to screw with your hormones. No, definitely uh, not. Body's developing like that. And so, you know, once you, once you go through that and you finish your developing, you, you're, you're set, you know, like you can optimize where you ended up, but you ended up in a different place, you know, just simple as that. Like you didn't develop the way that your body was set up genetically to, to, to uh, develop. And you, you can be perfectly happy and healthy. I think we both are. Like I didn't, I didn't, you know, uh, you know, uh, develop to my genetic potential or, or to what my, my genes had set out for me because I didn't eat a perfect diet when I was, uh, you know, uh, breastfeeding and, and young and, um, and in, in late adolescence, you know, it wasn't until early adulthood that I started eating exclusively meat and I wasn't eating enough fat either because fat's bad for you. So, you know, that's what I, I thought as well. And so I, I still ate fat, but I didn't eat uh, as much. I would go for leaner cuts often. Did you used to cut it up your steak? Um, I, I sometimes, like yeah. I wasn't, sure. wasn't sure. Is this good for me or not? I know it tastes good, yeah. but uh, you know, I don't know if I should be eating this. Yeah, I would. Um, I, I I would sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And and mm. I even had to when I started doing this again, and um, you know, was you know knew more about what I was doing and why I was doing it. I still like automatically was cutting off the fat. And so I just, I had to say to myself, like, what am I doing? Like, no, like I, I trust the research. I trust the data. Fat's good for me. Eat the mm. damn fat. I, I had to tell myself that eat the damn fat. And so I started doing that and I had to recondition myself because it was just like, Oh God, Oh, fat's bad for me. And so you, you sort of that taste, even though it's enjoyable, sort of repulses you at the same time. Exactly. And yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. But it's a, it's a conditioned response. You know, it's conditioned because it's, oh, well, this is bad. This is bad. That flavor is, is associated with ill health. This is bad for me, you know, and, but it's not. And so I was able to recondition myself like, nope, this isn't bad for me. This is good for me. Eat it. And, and so I did. And it was great. Um, but, and I, I certainly feel better because of that. And my, you know, I've had my hormones checked. I've had everything checked. My, you know, uh, vitamins, minerals, all my normal blood work, um, as well as my hormone panel, everything's been fine. You know, thyroid, testosterone, right. um, everything, everything has been, has been exactly where it's supposed to be. And, you know, and there's also, you know, studies and, um, and, uh, data that show that regardless of what your testosterone is, your body can either utilize it more effectively or less effectively, depending on, again, what you're eating. So carnitine has been shown to do a lot of things in your body. First of all, it's very important for your brain's development, your neuronal development. And there's actually kind of autism that has shown to be caused by a deficiency in carnitine. And so, you know, when kids aren't getting enough carnitine, they can, their brain won't develop uh, the way it's supposed to. Most of us make carnitine and, and generally make enough to, to, to stop this from happening, but not everyone does. And so if you cut out uh, meat and animal products and you just get no carnitine, like if you're on a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet, where you're very limited in the, mm. in the amount of meat that you eat, um, you, you may not be getting enough carnitine or your child may not be getting enough carnitine and they, their brain won't develop to their potential and pretend, and they could get this specific kind of autism, which is caused by this. It's caused, not correlated caused. And, uh, and that was shown by Texas A&M uh, in recent years. So, so I think with carnitine, obviously this is, this is very important in a lot of other things, but specifically to do with your hormonal health and, and particularly for men in general is that carnitine has been shown to increase the number of testosterone receptors that your cell has. So the same amount of testosterone is going to go farther. Okay. So that, that's how it works. You, you have, you have uh, receptors and you have, you know, uh, uh, you know, the hormones or whatever chemical. And so if you have, you know, 50 of these things, they're going to just bounce around and randomly knock into these, you have 50, 50, that'll be fine. They're just randomly going to be hitting into each other and they're going to be stimulating that receptor once they, they latch on, uh, properly. 
the more substrate you have, obviously the more molecules you have in there banging around. So you're going to have more interactions with those receptors. But of course, if you have more receptors, you're also going to have more interactions because the likelihood of hitting one of those receptors is going to go up. And so what you know, you, you can optimize your testosterone by having more testosterone, but you can also have more receptors. And then the testosterone that you have works better. It just, it just does more of its thing. So you need both and, and carnitine can actually help on the receptor side of things. So it can increase the number of receptors. So, you know, you have testosterone X and someone else has testosterone X, but they're not really getting, you know, the same, you know, uh, feeling as you are, and, but you have a ton more receptors. So you're more muscular, more slender, you know, have, have more, you know, mental clarity and, and everything else that, that comes with it. Obviously you can go for the other side of things and get all, you know, get a bunch of road roid rage, but like, but, but when it's physiological and it's normal for you, then it's good. It's positive. And so when you're not getting enough of that, you know, you, you, you don't feel as good and you, and you aren't as, as healthy. So carnitine, uh, is, is very important in that as well. And so that's, again, it's just something that, that comes from eating animals and red meat in particular, there's a ton of carnitine in red meat. And um, there is some carnitine in other things, uh, but there's a lot in, in red meat. And so right. people that eat red meat, they're going to, again, optimize their hormones even, even more. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, going along that sort of chain, um, maybe we should shift into talking about testosterone and talk about you know, how men can optimize their test testosterone. We've just, just sort of talked about carnitine, but what else should we be doing? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, and, and exactly right. You know, I mean, this is, this is about optimization. You know, we're not saying we need absolutely more of this. We're trying to get our bodies physiological for our systems. You know, we're not, not trying to get super, uh, at least I'm not trying to get super physiological um, or I don't, I don't encourage that in, in people either because you can get, you know, uh, just as many problems from doing that as you can from not, not having enough. So it's about optimizing. And there are so many different things that come into that. And just speaking generally, being on the diet of, of that's biologically appropriate, that your body was designed to eat, obviously is going to optimize that. And being optimal is the key word there, not massive, massive numbers, you know, because more isn't always better, you know? And so um, it's all about optimization. And there are a lot of a lot of reasons for this that we probably won't be able to cover in just in just one talk. And then certainly, you know, uh, I don't know all of them. I don't think, you know, no one knows all of them yet either. But when you eat biologically appropriate diet, your hormones are going to be optimized. That's just that's just all there is to it. And so regardless of what's happening, regardless of the the, the you know, mechanisms, it will be optimal. You know, you can take that to the bank. Um, some specifics with testosterone, um, you know, again, having enough cholesterol, having this dietary source of, uh, the precursor for your home hormones, getting enough sunlight, vitamin D, this, this is very important. Um, you know, you can think of vitamin D as a hormone as well. It's very important. It has a hormonal property in your body. Um, but then there's just simple things. So even people that, you know, aren't doing keto or aren't doing carnivore, you can actually increase your testosterone and your, and your human growth hormone, which is very, very important for multiple different uh, processes in your body. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you have like in these anti-aging clinics where they, you know, optimize hormones and optimize health so that people, you know, sort of look younger, feel younger, feel better. Growth hormone is, is a major component of that. Mm. Um, a very simple way of increasing your your growth hormone and your testosterone in men, um, even if you're, and probably especially if you're you're eating a, a standard American diet or standard Australian diet, is just by by fasting, doing fasts and doing even just intermittent fasting. If you just go into like an intermittent fast uh, with mm -hmm. like an eight hour window, or you you know, can eat throughout the day and you just skip, you basically eat on alternate days. So you just some, some form of some pattern of fasting. Yep. This has actually been shown in studies to double, no, sorry. Um, is it double? No, I think it's 50%. Increase your testosterone by 50%. Wow. And your growth hormone by 50%. So that's, that's, that's quite amazing. And that's, you know, that you may have 
diminishing returns with, because those studies are done with people that are just eating, you know, a standard Western diet. Right. And so, you know, part of that's going to be that you're just sort of getting away from things. You're eliminating all that processed shit, you know? And um, so I don't know how much more you get out of that by being on carnivore, but it's certainly something that's interesting. Mm. Um, I've also seen in my patients uh, that their testosterone will, within a matter of months, you know, for like middle-aged men, will actually jump up 25 to 30%, you know, sometimes a little more. And, you know, they probably have, you know, low T, this would be someone that would qualify for, uh, you know, testosterone replacement therapy, um, which is, you know, it's fine. I I don't have a problem with with people doing that, getting back up to a physiological level. Um, But the point is, is that going on a carnivore diet, you you may not even need to do that. Mm. And so, you know, you have people that, you know, would be in that, you know, qualify for, uh, you know, TRT, but now all of a sudden they're on carnivore for four months and now, now they don't even need it. And their body's just making, you know, banging away with testosterone. You have more carnitine. So your body's utilizing it more efficiently and people feel great, you know, and doing and, and it, um, like doing it naturally and making your own is always going to be a better solution, right? Yeah, I would say so. You know, Surely. I mean, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, because the thing is, is that, um, you know, having, having your body work the way it wants to work, there's a lot to be said for that. Now, you know, when we age, you know, we're just not going to be producing hormones in the same way as we are in, you know, in our you know late teens and mid twenties. Um, you're just not. So the thought is on, on these replacement therapies is that you're getting back to sort of how you were in your twenties. And, you know, is that bad? It's like, well, if it was bad for you, wouldn't that have been bad in your twenties, you know? And so that's, that's the argument. Um, so it just goes about, you know, how, how people feel. And, you know, as you age, you're, you're just not going to make, you know, hormones the way you used to, but, you know, you can, you know, you just like people going into, to on a ketogenic diet can come out of menopause, you know, given that it's not entirely too late. Um, you can actually just, give HRT and, and, and simulate a woman's cycle and actually continue their uh, fertility years there. When I think in the nineties, there was a lady who did this with hormone replacement and very specifically so that she could get pregnant. She was 63. Wow. So she, yeah. But this was com- completely done with exogenous hormones. Right. You know, okay. there wasn't, there wasn't, yeah. So it was just like, they, they, they gave her a pattern of hormones uh, exogenously that mimicked her normal cycle and her body actually ovulated, you know, Bloody which is hell. great. And, yeah. um, and so which she's is great, to, right. Or is it, I don't know, playing with nature. What do you think? Well, I think, yeah, who knows if it's great. great I, for her, I guess if she wants to have a baby. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, it, it's great in that sense, but you know, I, I don't know if it turned out great because, you know, she's 63 and that's, that's, you know, pregnancy is tough. Childbirth yeah. is tough. And so I actually never heard the end of that story. I don't actually know how, if the pregnancy yeah, yeah. went well, you know, or, or if, uh, you know, you know, something, something tragic. Yeah, did. yeah hopefully. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, so that's just, that's just the power of these, these hormones. So, yeah. you know, you're not going to be making hormones in the same way. And so some people, you know, want to get, get back up to physiological, um, I get asked all the time if I take that stuff. I don't definitively I fucking don't. And, um, <laughs> right, so, you, so you, I mean, you don't take TRT or anything like no. that. No, man. I mean, I, I don't even take ass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Natural <laughs> ass. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, I don't, I mean, the only thing that I would take every now and then is if I'm not getting outside, I mean, you know, cause I'm, I'm, you know, in the hospital before dawn and I'm leaving after dusk you know, and sometimes that's, that's every single day for weeks. And so if I'm not getting out into the sun, where am I getting my vitamin D from? I'll get it from butter. I'll get it from uh, animal fat, but I won't necessarily get as much as my body would like. And so, you know, in, when I feel that I'm sort of just not getting enough uh, sunlight, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take some vitamin D, you know, just because yeah, it's, uh, it's good to have, and you know, we're not living natural lives really, you know? And so like, normally I'd be outside doing things, you know, all day, but you know, I don't, I don't have that luxury at the moment. Mm. So that's, that's really all I'll take, you know? And then, <clears throat> you know, if you're, 
feeling like you're getting sick or you want to boost your immune system, you, know, you can take some zinc or some magnesium or some vitamin C and, and, and vitamin D certainly. And so, you know, I haven't really been sick in years, but you know, if I'm sort of around a lot of sick people and people sort of, don't, I might, I might just take some of those things just to bump it up, but all my levels have always gotten the uh, checks. have always been normal. Magnesium, zinc, and vitamin D. And as you say, this is sometimes when, mm. when things aren't quite right lifestyle wise. Yeah. And, and some vitamin C as well, but not, not all vitamin that much. C. You don't need to take that much. Mm. Um, yeah. So, so that, that's sort of a cocktail that's sort of become popular in, in some medical circles uh, to do with COVID uh, when that, that started being a thing. And there was, um, there were studies actually even published by the CDC that if you get your vitamin D level above a pretty normal level, uh, the mortality rate effectively goes to zero. That's published by the CDC. You know, you can look that up. And then if you basically get double that, you know, up to a, you know, a high normal sort of level of vitamin D, the yeah. morbidity rate of, uh, of the coronavirus effectively goes to zero. So you don't even get any like long COVID or any or sort of serious long-term side effects. Dude, I'm so um, glad we had the whole world shut down for two years because of this thing. Yeah. Just because people didn't, didn't want to get out in the sun. And, um, (laughs) and um, so that's what people were actually commenting on it and saying that, you know, instead of a flu season, they're thinking of it more as a low vitamin D season. Oh my God. Vitamin D is so important for your overall health and immune health that, that when you don't have enough of it, it won't work properly and you won't be able to fight off illnesses as well. Well, on the, uh, on the COVID stuff, I've got some firsthand experience. Uh, mm. because I, we, uh, may have contracted COVID and certainly a couple of my friends have and mm-hmm. taking a little cocktail of quite natural, uh, vitamins and, um, things you can get over the counter. Like just, you don't need a prescription, including a mega dose of vitamin D, mm-hmm. uh, better in 24 hours from yeah. this thing that shut down the world for two years. Um, yeah. well, so if great. anyone wants, if anyone wants the cocktail that I got from my friend message mm. me, and uh, I'll send you a screenshot with, with what's in there. Um, it freaking works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, they'll, they'll give in hospitals as well um, in the places that, that do well with this, because some, some, some of the times that they're giving medicines that don't work, it's, it's all just ad hoc. People are just, just treating this in very different ways. They're they're um, And they're having very different results as you, as you would expect. Um, but a very common cocktail uh, for active, uh, COVID or just to try to stave it off if you're around sick people a lot mm. is, you know, the vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, vitamin C. And, uh, and that, that seems seemed to work really well, you know, in, in specific doses, but it's very hard to take too much vitamin D. There are cases, you know, case reports of uh, people taking hundreds of thousands of uh, units of vitamin Why? D a day for Why? months just because they were dumb. I don't know. Like, just, I mean, you'd have to take so much uh, to do that. Just like, you know, like a half a handful of pills, you know? Um, so I don't know why. You got COVID person... bad. Well, you know, it wasn't during COVID. It was, yeah, it was yeah, no. before, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but they had actually no discernible uh, side effects from it. So, you know, I'm sure there are, I mean, you know, eventually, you know, water will kill you, but uh, from drinking water, obviously drowning is will kill you right away. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, you Same know, but just that. from 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 consuming and in, in in imbibing water, you'll you know you'll die eventually with about fifty gallons worth. But vitamin D at some point would almost you know beg your belief if it wasn't toxic at mm. some point. But whatever that toxic toxic point is, it's way out there because right, okay. you know there are people taking way too much vitamin D for way too long and they're, and they're not having problems. They're still and so, yeah. And so, you know, other things you can, you can have more of a problem with, but yeah. So, so, you know, vitamin D is, is a massive one. And, and you should think of that as a hormone, you know, it is a hormone, you know, and it's a precursor to hormones. And so, you know, this is something that's very, very important for your overall health and your immune health. Mm. So not getting outside and covering yourself with sunscreen, mm. probably not a good idea. Yeah. Well, you know, if, you know, as you said in the, the plants are trying to kill you episode, 
there are certain things like uh, photosensitizers in plants that, that well, in certain plants that will make you more sensitive to UV light, will make you burn more easily and make that, that burn be more damaging to your DNA and potentially precipitate uh, you know, cancer or, or other sorts of skin damage and mm -hmm. down the track cause more problems. So, you know, we know that. And when you're not eating that sort of stuff, your, your, your body's going to be much more healthy. Your skin's going to be much more healthy. It's just going to look more healthy as well. It's going to be softer. It's going to be, you know, you know, thicker, firmer collagen. And, um, and it's just going to be nicer, more youthful skin. And it's going to hold up better in the, in the sunlight. I mean, we, you know, animals live outside. We're animals, you know, we didn't evolve in a box and we certainly didn't evolve in the building. Um, the sun's good for you. But if you are eating things that make you sensitive to sunlight and cause damage, it's still good for you. It's just that the plants mm. are bad for you and mm. the plants are screwing with a, a natural healthy process. Yeah. You know, the sun didn't all of a sudden become unhealthy. It's the plants that are, that are unhealthy and using something healthy to screw with you. Mm. But you know, sunlight's actually still good for you. Yeah. So you only need the sunscreen because, you know, yeah. you're eating the plants. And it's, yeah, exactly. it's, a bit, it's a bit like what we were saying with the estrogen before. It's like you only need the tofu and the soybeans because you're yeah, estrogen yeah. below the place. You know? it's, yeah, not, yeah. it's not root cause stuff. Um, question for you. So now that, I'm, now that I'm 30 and I'm starting to think about my testosterone, uh, what, when, I, when I optimize my testosterone, which I'm, I think I'm pretty close to doing because I go out in the sun, I eat a lot of steak. I'm basically carnivore. Um, mm -hmm. What, what, what can I expect? Like, what, what are the benefits of having optimized testosterone? Oh, well, you know, you'll have, you know, more, you know, um, muscle bone density, you'll have, uh, you know, more mental clarity, you'll have more energy, you'll have more, you know, obviously, um, you know, sexual vigor and drive. Um, and, and that, again, is it's just a marker of, of, of health and you know, virility is just a marker of health in general. So it's, uh, it can have a lot of benefits and just, just basically you will feel better physically mm -hmm. and mentally, and you'll be able to perform better. You'll be able to, uh, perform better, you know, mentally as well as physically. And then, you know, those physical actions that you do, you'll, you'll get more out of it, you know, because your body's being signaled, uh, you know, to grow and respond in, in certain ways with that testosterone. Um, you know, which is, which is why people take testosterone. Yeah, you know, exactly. Very simply. Um, but, uh, but at, you know, at the same time, you know, you, you still need to, to stimulate your body. I was, um, uh, you know, I went, I went to college with, with people then, and some of them used that sort of stuff, but it was always funny because it was, it was generally the ones that actually weren't working all that hard that, that had to use it, um, because they just wanted a shortcut. And, you know, they had like, you know, myself and my friends who we put in a lot of work, uh, in the weight room and on the rugby field to really, really push ourselves and really get the most out of our bodies. And these guys really didn't, you know? And so they, mm. they sort of used that. And, you know, there was uh, one guy who was a roommate of a good friend of mine. I mean, and this guy would, would go to the gym basically every day and lift and, and his roommate, we always invite him like, Hey, you want to go? Sometimes he'd go, you know, maybe like once a week, you know, we, we would go at least four to five times a week and he would show up once this kid was doing steroids he wanted to be big and, and strong like us do so the work, like, yeah, man. Do this. and he then he did and he just did like you know multiple different uh steroids and the guy wasn't working out so he's he's doing all this damage to his body he's taking all this risk legally and all this expense financially and from his health perspective and and he's not even doing anything with it so the guy did did this for months he, he looked exactly the same as he did before that. And it was just like, and it, you know, he didn't really look like he was someone who worked out a lot, mm. you know? And so you need the you know, stimulus. People, yeah. Well, and you know, like he felt good, you know, he's, he's probably just coursing with hormones. He's like going to puberty, like, yes. but <laughs> like, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't, you know, actually utilizing it. And so he didn't get the, you know, the physical, adaptations that that he he could have had but he, you know he could have gotten a lot of results just by putting in the work and that's and that's the thing it's it's hard work that does it it's not it's not the chemicals it's not uh you know just adding to it your body will do that for you you know if you treat your body well and you push yourself and you work hard your body's going to do just fine like you don't need those things you know at a certain point 
you know, we, we're not really going to make these things. And, and so if you feel better and you have more energy and, and you're happier like that, you know, you go for it. Like, I don't, I don't have a problem with people doing that to physiological levels. I think you hurt yourself when you go past that, but you know, to physiological levels, like go for it, but you know, you, you know, you need to actually put in the work. And when you put, and that's another thing too, just exercise will increase your, your growth hormone and testosterone. You're just stimulating your body to work. You know, you get busy living or you get busy dying. You know, when these, when these processes aren't needed anymore, your body will shut them down because it's efficient. It's trying to conserve energy. Why would you expend so much energy and so many uh, resources in your body for something that you just don't need? Your body's not just going to say like, just build the hell out of your pecs unless you are stimulating it to your body heals and grows in lines of stress. And so this goes for, for bone uh, mineral density as well. You know, you're, if you're putting stress on the bone, it's going to form new pieces of bone to support in, in those directions, you know? Yeah. And so uh, in fact, actually, you know, Dr. Um, John Jaquish, who did the- uh, Man, I listened bar. to that. That was a really good chat. Oh yeah. I should go and check out this interview. Yeah. Well yeah. Done. So, so yeah. So he, uh, actually one of, one of his early inventions was something to help with osteoporosis uh, because his mom had osteoporosis. And he's like, okay, how do I fix this? And it's, it's basically just putting pressure on your bones. And it's just, you know, it's compressive pressure. You just hold, hold yourself there and you're just pushing and, and your, your, your bones are getting stressed in a certain direction. And so they're stimulated to, to grow and reinforce themselves. That's how your body works, you know? And when you don't do that, body's just gonna be like, right, we don't need these here. We're gonna, you know, take them down for scraps. So, and that, that'll happen at any time. So you just need to put in the work, put in the work and that, and that will stimulate growth hormone that will stimulate testosterone. And so one of the easiest ways to bump up your, your growth hormone is to do a heavy workout. Like a heavy leg day will actually give you a hit of, of growth hormone that's similar to that you know, which we, we, we be giving people exogenously once they, you know, run out, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and need supplementation, just do a heavy leg day and you, and you'll get the same hit of, uh, of, of growth hormone, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's very powerful. Um, and that's, yeah. And so, yeah, that's, that's definitely one to remember is, is, is resistance, resistant exercises. You will, you will, uh, fundamentally, uh, uh better your, your hormonal system. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, you know, it's not just nutrition. You still need to move your body. You need to put on mm. stress. You need to do the resistance work. Um, I yeah, suppose one on the sun. Yeah. Every on the sun. Yeah. I mean, one big benefit of carnivore that I found is that it is easier to train. So you've, yeah. you've got more energy and if you've worked all day and then you still want to get a workout in, you can, because you're not crashing. Um, yeah. And, and you can train for longer. Like you've got lots of great, you know, experiences where you've just trained and trained and trained when you've been, you know, strict carnivore like you are now. Um, so yeah, you still need to train, but training is more pleasurable. You know, there's, yeah. there's less inflammation in your body. So it doesn't hurt as much. You know, there's less like arthritis, sore knees, all that sort of thing. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's more enjoyable. Yeah, no, it definitely is. And, you know, when I talk about the, you know, our metabolism, being optimal when you're on a carnivore diet or even ketogenic diet, you're going to be in the optimal metabolic state. You're going to be in our primary metabolic state. That's what I argue. Um, you know, we call it a fed state and a fasting state. I think that's completely wrong. You know, people have listened uh, to this stuff before. You know, I've mentioned it before, but the, the, the fed state, I think is, is uh, just actually a pathological defense state of defense mechanism to protect yourself against high blood sugar. And then you, you correspondingly increase your insulin to just get this stuff the hell out of there. So you're not killing yourself with blood sugar. And then that, that high insulin and the, the uh, responding sort of uh, issues from that are all going to screw you up in a number of different ways. And uh, we see this in many, many disease processes. So when you don't have that in your system, your body actually works you know, very, very well and, and very normally. Um, so when you, when you stimulate your, your, uh, you know, body to go in a carnivore metabolism, you actually do just feel better because that's, that's how we feel better is when we burn more energy. So this is why people drink coffee or they take stimulants because that, that forces your body to burn more energy. And so you're just, you're burning hotter and you feel good because you're burning more energy. Well, most people have to take an energy drink or a supplement to force their body to start burning more energy so that they feel good enough to go work out 
Whereas, you know, you or, you or I will start working out and our body will produce the exact amount of energy that we need for what we're start doing. To, start to feel yeah, better so, instantly. Yeah, you do. And so you feel better because when, when you start working hard, because when you start working harder, your body starts producing and burning more energy and you feel better because of you're burning more energy. And so that makes you want to work out harder and want to work out harder because you feel better and better and better and better. And so it's this positive feedback loop and you, and you just feel great. So you actually feel good during the workout, not just like you're killing yourself in the gym and you're like, Oh, I hate this. I hate this. But then you leave and you go like, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm glad I went. I feel great as I'm doing it. I was in, um, I went to the gym probably for the first time in, you know, in a number of weeks since I was on vacation, but I, I just wanted to get like a good leg day in. So, um, like the old school bodybuilders like Serge Nubre and, um, and others, they would do this thing. They, they were just, they were killing it. We're like, if they're doing upper body, they would do like, someone would do like eight sets of eight. And so you do like eight where it's hard to do, but then like to where you go, you keep doing it. And then where eight becomes really, really difficult. But you, but for upper body stuff, you only give yourself 30 seconds rest because the point is you really, really want to just drive blood in there and, yeah. and get those things stimulated. And, um, and so I was sort of doing that and, and you, and you do you know wear yourself out quicker. Like I can just sort of keep going. If I give myself enough rest, like a couple minutes and my body replenishes its, its glycogen, um, I can just keep going, but it's sort of interesting to really wear yourself out like that by not giving yourself enough rest. Um, and, and then on legs, they would only give themselves a minute. So it was just 60 seconds rest between, you know, a heavy set of legs. Um, sometimes you don't catch your breath, you know, by then. Um, so I was doing this and I was, I was doing heavy legs and I was sort of doing um, sets of 12. And so I did end up doing eight sets of 12 with just a minute rest in between. And like, I was, it was, you know, going and like, I was, I was definitely feeling burn uh, on my legs and my glutes. And, um, you know, and I finished that up and it was, it was a, it was a tough workout and I felt great doing it. I really liked it. Normally when I hadn't done legs in months, probably, you know, I'd just be crippled right now. I, I wouldn't be able to, I would not be able to sit down. I just be like mm. in agony. I wouldn't be able to walk properly. I feel fine. You know, yeah. There's actually no problem. Like I definitely feel like my legs have been like my legs are saying like like yeah you know we worked a lot we need to heal here, but they don't hurt. They're not sore. They're not stiff. And so you know that that uh, it, it's fantastic. And you just that mm -hmm. that little thing you feel better during your workout, but also you just you don't have the same recovery and pain and agony that you get uh, after your workout. You know, which yeah, is, I think is amazing. Yeah. The fast recovery, it means you can train, you can train every day. It's not like, you know, some people go to the gym once a week to do legs. Like you can literally do some form of legs every day, which is, which is awesome. Yeah. So think about how much better your results are going to be and how much more you're going to enjoy working out. If, if you know, you can push it, get a heap of blood flow and the next day, good to go. Yeah. And yeah. And, and that's it. You know, because a lot of people get, uh, you know, quite uh, nervous about, um, you know, exercising because they're like, well, I haven't worked out in a while. I don't want to be sore. Well, you, you don't have that problem anymore. My, uh, my dad was telling me he had a friend of his who was, who was older, uh, older than he was sort of like, you know, late middle age. And he wanted to get back in the gym and he went to a personal trainer and said, Hey, look, I haven't worked out in a long time. Just go easy on me. I want to ease into this. I want to get going, but you know, just ease into me. And the guy like really just pushed him. It was like a, you know, a drill sergeant sort of guy. And he was just, his whole body just like, couldn't get out of bed the next day. And he's like, yeah, screw that guy, you know? And, um, you know, he never went back because, you know, he was so sore that doesn't exist. If you, mm. uh, if you don't eat this crap, and, um, you know, it's, it's very hard for people to believe, but all you have to do is do it. Just try it, you know, stop yeah, eating yeah. The, that crap for two weeks. You will not be able to get sore. I guarantee you. you yeah. Just, and you'll, doesn't happen. and you'll notice things like the aches and pains in the morning in certain areas are gone. Like, you know, mm -hmm. if you've got sore ankles in the morning or knees, um, yeah. or what have you, you just completely forget about it or back like even sort of yeah. lower back so many people have back pain and you know i'm convinced it's in inflammation from eating processed foods mm. it, well uh, it is and yeah. um, you know you can have you can have injuries um and you can have you know wear and tear and arthritis but the the pain that you experience is going to be very very different depending on what you eat so i i've i've had back pain since i was 15 years old you know always played you know a very 
you know, uh, aggressive sports that, that are very you know, taxing on your body. You know, I had two desiccated discs uh, on an MRI when I was 20, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, um, you know, I have, I have lower back pain and you, even now, you know, it's, a, it's a bit sort of like, you know, get certain positions or, you know, sort of like, you know, bending over, like, you know, getting socks on or, or whatever. And I'm just like, get like a bit of a, like kind of a discomfort, but it's nothing that limits me. It's just something that I notice every now and then contrast that with eating any amount of carbs or rice or beans or anything like that. Even just like a, the last time I had any of that garbage, it, um, it was sort of on a plate that I went to a restaurant and, and it sort of was just on it. And I was trying to scrape it off, but it just didn't get everything off. And so I was like, all right, well, you know, is it that big a deal? Let, you know, let's see, you know, dose mix and poison. And uh, my back felt like someone was stabbing me in the spine for four days after that. I was just in absolute agony. Um, and, uh, you know, I have, <clears throat> you know, I have, you know, just, you know, some, some arthritis issues on my patellar tendon or sorry, not patellar, uh, my patella, not my patellar tendon. And, um, you know, that's just from years of, you know, doing kickboxing and knee strikes and the rugby and just, just stuff wears down the rest of the knees perfect, but those are that parts, um, you know, uncomfortable. And so I had an MRI and it, um, and it showed, you know, uh, this issue and the, the radiologist who I was talking to, he's just like that right there, that knee, that knee would keep me in bed. I would not be able to get out of bed with that knee. And I was like, I don't even notice it, you know, like doing certain things, it, it, you know, you know, it'll, it'll be, um, you know, noticeable, but it's, it's noticeable. It's, it's not a hindrance. It does not cause me any, any real problems, you know? I mean, like naturally, like you imagine our sort of ancestors or hunter gatherers, they would have had so many busted ligaments and patellas and, you know, all sorts of injuries, impact injuries along the way. And they weren't constantly in pain or bedridden, you know, maybe they were well, and they ate the wrong thing, but. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and the thing is, is that there, there aren't really as, uh, um, as many examples of arthritis in those, those natural cultures as well. And, um, you know, there's, there was, it was a story that I read, you know, well, first of all, like the Maasai in Africa, like when living traditionally, they just don't get the, the d disease that we get and they don't get arthritis. And, um, there was an interview with one of these guys, uh, where he was talking about like his dad actually was a, a trader and he interacted uh, with people in the cities. And so he would bring whatever, you know, the Maasai had to sell and, and trade into the cities. And so he would have these, these lunches and these dinners uh, with different sorts of people and they have sweets and candies and, and desserts or whatever. And he would, he would sort of eat that stuff when he was out, you know, interacting with, with uh, the Western, you know, cultures. And so he, he was mostly eating what the Maasai always eat, but just, just that, um, just eating that much, this guy was saying that this guy, uh, he started getting arthritis when no one gets arthritis and he was, had knee problems and back problems. And, you know, he, the guy like died in his nineties, which is super weird because you normally really like they, that's, that's, that's young, you know, for these guys, when you're, you know, when you're, you're, you normally live to 120, you know, and, um, you know, so it's interesting. Um, yeah, your, your body just shouldn't just fall apart like that, you know, structurally you know, just shouldn't just break down. And, you know, when you're out in the wild and you need to, you need to hunt to live and you need to, you know, fight off, you know, panthers and, and saber toothed cats. Yeah. You don't you know. have a bit of arthritis in your knee. So you can't yeah, so, oh, oh, that's my back, you know, and hold like, on, hold tight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's it. You know, that's, that's your lunch at that point, you know? Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and people, people don't realize this, you know, they think that just people just broke down and, and just, you know, died so early and so young. It's not true. You know, you look at Alexander the great, uh, he died young, but what about his generals? You know, he had some of his, uh, one of his generals, uh, cavalry, cavalry generals was there fighting on the front line. Dude was like 76 and he was in the battles fighting on a horse, you know, 76, right. You know, what, what, how many 76 year olds do you know that are able to, you know, you know, ride around on a, on a war horse, you know, sword fighting with people and winning, you know, and you know, the, his, uh, you know, his pikemen, they had these, these special Macedonian sort of spearmen. They have sort of, you know, five ranks of the spearmen with these very long, sharp shredded ass spears. And, um, and so you had to get through five waves of, 
things trying to stab you just to get to the first guy, you know? So it was very difficult. I mean, they, they absolutely just destroyed all these different uh, militaries because they just, you know, you couldn't get through that porcupine sort of formation. Um, their, their guys ages ranged anywhere from 20 to 60, wow. you know? So you had 60 year olds there with a, like a, I think it was like a 14 or 16 foot long spear with a heavy weight at the back and a big, like five foot long blade at the front, you know, and it's, that's not light, you know, and you're there in formation, you know, stabbing the hell out of people and doing this, you know, time after time, after time for years and in their sixties, you know what I mean? And, you know, generals, in their seventies going around fighting on the front lines. So, you know, our bodies are actually designed to, to hold up a lot better than we, than we give him credit for. And it's not like Alexander the great, you know, and his warriors were all carnivores, you know, they probably ate a lot of meat. You know, the Greeks knew that meat was very important, but you know, they, they would eat other things as well. And so, you know, we just are really on the other side of that where we're eating so much of this toxic junk that, you know, we just think it's normal for the body just to just to break down and crumble to dust. Mm. Totally. Um, all right. I think that's a good that's a good place to wrap up. Uh, great combo on hormones. We went all over yeah. the place. Yeah. Um, bottom line: get your hormone yeah. health right because mm. there's a there's a wonderful life out there to be lived if you if you do get it in check. Yeah. Well, and also is it's just you know this is just another piece in the puzzle of optimizing your health. You know, your, your health is going to be optimized if you're eating optimally and you're giving your body exactly what it needs to run optimally. And you're not introducing a lot of harmful substances that are going to detract from that. And so this is just another piece in, of, of that puzzle showing that this is, this is how these certain things can help optimize your, your hormonal health. But it's doing so many other things as well to optimize your health in other ways. And so it's really what it's about. And if people want to do something outside of that, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy for you if you want to do whatever you want to do. I'm just trying to tell people what I think the evidence shows to be optimal. And so if you want optimal, this is what I think it is. And you can try it for yourself and, and see what you think. That's how I feel the best. And so that's what I do. And if someone wants to do that, that's great. And if they don't want to do that, that's fine. You know, we're just trying to, just trying to give people information and, and help them make a good decision for themselves. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Anthony. Cool. No problem. Thank you.